Behold, the humble parklo, the partial clover leaf, as it were. Probably my favorite service interchange, exceptional at getting cars on and off the highway, uh, relatively easy to build, beautiful to look at. It's, it's kind of got it where it counts, uh, much better than its counterpart, the clover leaf. The clover leaf is a system interchange designed for connecting highways to one another in a free flowing manner. Uh, I'm gonna explain to you how they are different and ultimately how to build a few different types of partial clover leaf. Everybody, thanks for being here. Let's see how it's done. This vehicle represents you. And what you wanna do is make a left onto the highway, the connected highway connected by the interchange. So what you have to do is go straight and then make the second right onto this loop and then merge here and away, you've done it. But the way that that actually works out with other traffic running through this thing, it's perfectly symmetrical on all sides. So all sides share these special traits uh, that come with a, a weave. So you're traveling along and you need to get in the right lane up ahead. But look, this other vehicle wants to actually get to this middle lane while you're traveling. So now this vehicle is merging into the right lane as it should. You are traveling in the middle lane as you should. <laughs> if they keep going straight, they're forced to go into the right lane to go back the way they came from. If you keep going straight, you miss your exit. So what we have here is a weave where this vehicle needs to get over and you need to get over at the same time. So to negotiate that, you have to, you have to negotiate that. You have to think about it. And uh, it, it's honestly a huge collision point and it's a big uh, source of backups on this thing. So you keep going. Let's assume the car is on top of the highway. Cool, you made it to your exit. You negotiated the first weave successfully. Let's go around the clover leaf as we should. And finally, you've made it. But look, now you are the other guy. Now you're the car that's blocking this fellow who wants to get in the right lane to make this to make this clover leaf to make their left turn. So now you've already negotiated it once. You have to negotiate it one more time where you're either going to get in front of them or you're going to let them go ahead and, and get behind them and and switch. And that's great. By the time you've done it, totally fine. Once again, this example only has three cars, though. Imagine this side is nearly backed up with traffic and this vehicle has to merge into that traffic that's sitting still and and switch lanes with all of those cars and then go around the loop and do it all again. Now you're the guy that's in the way trying to get to the middle lane so that you can continue on and the traffic here is trying to get to the right lane. So that is what the weave is and that is why I don't like the cloverleaf interchange, but it is distinct. This is a, a system interchange, so it's designed for connecting a highway to another highway. What we're going over today, though it shares the name Cloverleaf, we're gonna be going over the partial Cloverleaf, which is for getting vehicles on and off the highway. Let's, let's take a look at a couple different variations and how you might implement them in your city. There's actually a very handy Wikipedia article that references all of the different types of, of partial Cloverleafs. There are so many variants. I don't, there's literally nine or 10 variant. I don't know. There's a bunch of variants. Um, feel free to check those out if you'd like, but I'm going to show you my favorite approach to my favorite variant, actually. Um, as with most of my interchanges, I like to start with the overpass. So for this one, I've decided that 14 units wide is what we're going to do. Oh, 10 meters high. I'm going to start with 10 meters high and 14 meters wide, at least. I've marked off the spot. That's all that little road is, is just marking off my uh, where the overpass is going to sit. What I'm looking for is 14 units across and even on both sides, which is great. With standard node spacing, also it'll put a pillar right in the middle, which is great for aesthetic and, and I really like it in this case. So that's our overpass. Lovely. On this one, I'm also going to go 12 units down to ground. So we're going to have ramps that are that are 12 units long. Leave the pillar there. 12 units long on both sides. This this will change, you know, this this is totally my choice for this size of partial cloverleaf that I'm doing. And you will see how the wh why I do it this way and how the numbers could adjust if you wanted to change the dimensions of yours. No problem if you do. Uh, there's so many variants and so many correct ways to do this. Uh, I'd recommend exploring more than just this one, but I'm gonna show you at least one or two iterations of it. And at this, so at this point, I'm gonna make a loop. So this is assuming, just for context, imagine here's our highway, 
right hand traffic beautiful love it uh, this is our arterial road which isn't connected to anything but i have spotted the landing give or take it's going to hit approximately there and that's why i marked this particular spot just to give you a glimpse into to my logic um, the reason that I left this pillar or this node so far from the highway, it's exactly five units away. I want to be allowed to put something in the middle in between the two of them. So in this case, I'm going to take a two lane highway from the mass transit DLC, and I'm going to go four units up. And the reason I'm doing this is because we're going to loop this one around to here, and it's going to land four units away from this. It does not have to be perfect. I have a problem, in fact, where my stuff is so symmetrical. I'm so addicted to symmetry that uh, <laughs> that I really like building symmetrical stuff. One day you'll see me break that habit and it's going to be glorious. But for now, this is what we're doing. But the reason I measured everything out is because these are exactly 14 units apart, which means if I want to curve this, if I want to make a loop, seven units by seven units plus another seven units by seven units hits the mark exactly. I think I think that did it, right? 56, yep, gorgeous. So there's one loop. If I repeat that on the other side, we'll get two loops. Wonderful. All right, we've got two loops, which is at bare minimum, a partial cloverleaf only needs one loop technically, but in this case, I'm gonna do a two loop um, cloverleaf. The way that a single loop would work, I'm calling these loops, there might be a better name for them, but the way that a single loop would work would be this side can loop around and reconnect to the highway, which we're about to make. Um, the other side would essentially just be a diamond interchange. So you would exit, boom, intersection, and entrance back to the highway. So imagine that, imagine a diamond. Check out my previous video about, about the single point urban interchange if you wanna see about diamonds and why I don't like them as much. Um, but this is, this is the way that this road is gonna get back on the highway. Ignore the type of road for, for just a moment, because this is actually going to be a two-lane road by the end of it. So imagine, uh, perhaps perhaps it's this one here, a two-way a two -way road specifically. So now we've got this, there's clipping going on, ignore that, but we've got this bi-directional road, a two-lane bi-directional road, where one is entering the arterial, exiting the highway, and the other side is entering the highway going north, right? So I'm gonna do that on both sides. Um, this is gonna be our, our entrance, our on-ramp essentially. So at this point, it's really starting to take shape. You're really seeing the, the loops come into play and the way that this connects to the highway can be as simple as, you'll see me do this in virtually every video. I take my ramp, I take the freeform road tool, spot a landing, just pick an amount, uh, 33, 36, you know, somewhere in there. 33 looks good to me. We're gonna do that on the other side. I'm gonna show you how to get rid of that nasty uh, clipping. There we go. Um, I also swapped out this, the two-way road, the bi-directional two-way road I was talking about. I swapped it out for four lanes just because it's a healthier, kind of a healthier route to go for, for the lane math here. But the way that this goes, uh, this nasty clipping here just needs to get kind of adjusted out. So what I'm gonna do is use, use move it. And because these are overlapping, they're clipping. But if you hold control and just nudge it ever so slightly, you can do this to one or both of them, nudge them away from one another so that they're not uh, clipping. Very, very simple. Make sure you've done your end before you do this though, because it'll kind of mess with the angle. You, it won't be parallel to the road anymore once you've nudged it. So make sure you've finished it first, but just go back after you've built it. Move it on the segment, hold control, give it a little nudge until it looks better. Um, I'll probably mess with that a little bit more. But to finalize this, the final, the, the Coupe de Grassi, if you will, would be to connect this to the, to the highway. And this is what I would call, other than a one loop, uh, other than a one loop partial cloverleaf, I would say that this is essentially the bare minimum. I wouldn't really do any less than this unless you're willing to sacrifice a bit of functionality, you know? And it's not as pretty as some, though it, I mean, it looks pretty good. It's got some charm to it. But the way that this works is if you wanted to exit, if you're on the highway and you wanted to exit to this arterial, you would exit on the right, you would come up, you would pick left or right lane, and that would determine which way you're turning. So if you go left at the end, 
you're going this way. You're going, uh, it would net you a right hand turn from there. If you go right here, it nets you a left hand turn. It's all relative. It's all relative to what direction and what turn you're taking, but I would call that a bare minimum partial clover leaf. Now, if you're real cool, everybody's doing it. Okay, no pressure. Pure pressure intensifies. If you're really cool and you really want to make a, a super duper cool interchange, you keep this going. You don't connect it there. Don't stop. Don't stop believing. Extend this road. I'm going to trim it right there. And extend this road. What you can opt to do is actually make a right hand turn that happens right here. This is what I'd totally recommend doing. I'm gonna make that four, three or four units away, probably four units there. Connect over here, love it. And what I'm looking for is I wanna keep my, my numbers even. I wanna do another seven by seven here. And this is the wild way of doing it. This is the wild and crazy way. So bear with, boom. And then freeform road tool connect to this road. So what this really does the quick and dirty method <laughs> that I'm using here. What this really does at the end of the day is it makes the interchange a bit more functional than it would be otherwise. It gives you a beautiful right-hand turn without crossing over traffic, which as often as you can afford to do that, I recommend doing it. Reducing conflict is, is kind of key. Same rule here, we're gonna nudge this guy until it doesn't look horrible. There we go, that's not horrible. Turn this road backward to illustrate, beautiful. So now, if you wanna make a right, let's say you're going this direction, you wanna make a right into this, you would make a right here, and you would exit again as soon as possible. Make a right, and then traffic manager would make this turn a right turn only. A lot of uh, traffic manage management may be required for this one to work as intended. But there's your right hand turn. And it can be conflict free depending on how your lane math works out. So I'd really recommend adding that as an additional option rather than just the loop here. Um, do both, do both. Because then when you adjust this, no right turn, uh, no left turn required, right turn only. So the only way from this bit of highway to go left onto this road is to follow the entire loop and make that right, which doesn't cross over traffic. It's really, really great. So that is my favorite version of the partial clover leaf. I'm going to finish this out and show you what it looks like. There we go. That is my typical specimen in shape, at least. So lane connectors. I generally don't recommend using these in regular intersections, but in the case of the partial clover leaf, you really need to use them. Or in the case of a lot of junctions and a lot of interchanges, I'd strongly recommend using these. But the way this is going to work out is these three lanes are all straight through. These two become lefts. These two stay rights. On this side, they're just going to be two straight across and two right turns. So that looks like a big bunch of mush probably, but really what you want to make sure of <laughs> is that this lane gets out. Two of these lanes cross. Two of these lanes make a left. On this side, you want to be sure that two of these lanes turn and two of these lanes go straight through. Um, your mileage will vary. The second you change the number of lanes and the lane math going into this thing, this will change. But just keep that in mind, you know? All that really matters is if you add this extra ramp, this slip lane here, that's going to be turning right next to these two. Easy to remember. These two in my configuration happen to be turning left. These two will always be turning right. You want a couple through lanes and a couple turn lanes here. So there it is. I've done that twice. The other caveat to the whole thing is I would strongly recommend using lights, using a, a lighted intersection for this whole thing. There's an alternative to this. I'm going to show you that in just a moment as a little bonus. If you don't feel like doing lights, I've got a boy, have I got a deal for you. Uh, I'd like to add a junction to this traffic light. If you haven't seen my video about traffic lights, it explains actually exactly how to do this setup here. But what we have here is a, a dual traffic light setup, which is exactly what we want. 
I think my favorite way to visualize how a traffic light should be set up is by looking where there is conflict in your, in your intersection and where there is no conflict. So what this tells me is that these three lanes can always be running. So this will have a light that is always green. This may not be the case in real life. This also may not be the case in your interchange if you reconfigure it. But in, in this case here, looking at those lines, this light will always be green. Hit edit on this. Um, they're always entering. This one, the left-hand turns are definitely going to have to stop for a cycle. But this one can be green all the time. So let's let's make that change on both sides. Change mode there. You are always coming in. The straight through traffic is always merging with this traffic here, and I think that's great. And now let's pick which cycle this is. This is our first cycle. Maybe we're letting this in first. So it's a two cycle light. If we let this side all go at the same time, this left turn is stopped. So these guys can make their right turn. And you could even add a slip lane here to further simplify, uh, <laughs> to further complicate things by simplifying them. Experiment with, with slip lanes at your own discretion, but I really like to keep it all in a single, uh, in a single intersection for this side. So that is step one, if I'm not mistaken. We're gonna add step two, two cycle light. You guys stop. You guys go. And this left turn can go. Let's do that to the other side as well. It's so much to think about, honestly. Uh, this traffic can stop. This traffic can go. This left turn can also go. Add. Okay, let's see if that works. So, in the first cycle, we are letting... <laughs> Why is there a truck in the interchange? It goes to nowhere right now. In the first cycle, the through traffic can go through, and this traffic can merge with that. The left is stopped. The incoming traffic is stopped. All of these lanes get to go. So our right turns and our straight throughs, that's happening on both sides. In the second cycle, all that really changes, in a moment it should change, this traffic is going to have to stop to allow this left turn to go in just a moment. There it is. So now this left turn is going. This traffic is all stopped. Now these guys can turn right uncontested. No conflict, no conflict, no conflict. So that is it. That is the setup that I use. Like I said, you can throw in slip lanes or whatever, which will simplify things by complicating them. Do it at your own risk. I like to do it this way in a junction, and both of these are identical. Uh, that's, that's the lights for this whole operation. Behold the roundabout park low. This is that, that bonus one I was talking about. No lights required on the ends, which is pretty cool. Um, I've done away with the slip lane, so the right hand turn seems probably unnecessary. If you do a, an interchange like this where you're doing a single lane slipping away, two lane road to consolidate this into one node, set the roundabouts up using traffic manager. The measurements are a bit different with this one. I did a nine by nine curve up here. So nine by nine by nine by nine. This is a four by four roundabout, uh, still 12 units to the top of the ramp. But that is it. These would continue on in both directions. I would call this not as good or maybe not as uh, not as able to flow traffic as the other one that I built down here. This is optimal in my opinion, if the lights are set up correctly and all the lane math is really good. Um, this is this is a decent version, but I don't think it would just, I don't think it would have the throughput and that's okay, you know, it's fine. This is just if you wanna do it without the lights on the ends and without all the added lane math and without adding slip lanes. Undoubtedly, uh, undoubtedly that's a simpler approach to it. But that is it. Let me go back to one of my fully, <laughs> fully working ones. Uh, I'd like to thank you for finding the channel. Thank you for watching. Thanks for clicking on the video. Thank you for liking the video and commenting and subscribing and all that good stuff. This is a growing channel and I hope to make a lot more videos in the future. Uh, also, feel free to check me out on uh, Twitch at twitch.tv slash yumble TV. I do streams two or three times a week there. Uh, what else? More videos in the future. We have a Discord. If you have any questions, feel free to ask questions in the comments or for tougher questions or if you want to share your build with the community, feel free to join our Discord linked in the description. But that is all I've got.
I love the Parklo, and I wanted to impart some of that on you today, and I hope I've, I've won you over. Everybody, thanks for hanging out. I've been Yumble. I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.